Okay, sir. Welcome to M4 PG. So let's start the session, sir. Okay. Start today's session. <clears throat> so shall I record? Are you recording? Today we are going to discuss about uh, the carcinoma of endometrium. So I am Dr. Say Sayed Yasser, uh, resident radiation oncologist from the GSL Cancer Hospital and Research Center. So coming to the anatomy of the uterus. Uh, the uterus is divided into the fundus, body, and uh, the cervix. And between the body and uh, the cervix, we are having a narrow uh, constricted part that is uh, the isthmus. And uh, that is about uh, the uterus. And uh, we can see the fundus of uh, the uterus, the body of the uterus, the cervix, and a narrow constricted part that is the isthmus. And uh, along with uh, its uh, ligaments. So the uterus is having three metrums, that is endo, myo, and the perimetrium, that are the layers of the uterus. Then coming to the lymphatic drainage, uh, coming to the lymphatic drainage of the uterus, which is uh, most important in the, the carcinomas and all. So the lymphatic drainage from uh, the fundus uh, goes through the around the uterine artery to the paraortic lymph nodes, whereas from the cornua. Uh, it goes to the superficial inguinal uh, lymph nodes so through the round ligament. From the body, it goes to the external iliac and adjacent to the cervix, to the cervical lymphatics. Mm, that is the lymphatic uh, drainage of the, the uterus. And uh, the artery uh, which supplies to the uterus is the uterine artery, which is uh, the division of anti division of the internal iliac artery. Coming to the again uh, small details about the uterus, that is uh, the uterus in a hollow muscular organ that is situated within a rectum and bladder, and uh, at the end of the menstruation, uh, the, <clears throat> the length will be of the endometrial uh, size will be of two to three millimeter, and it will usually be consisting of the columnar cells and the tubular glands. In the supports of the uterus, as you know, the broad ligament round and the uterus center and the cardinal ligament. And the artery, as I have told, the uterine artery and the main lymphatics of the uterus are operator, internal iliac, and the external iliac lymphatics. So, coming to the risk factors, that is, uh, hello, Nigam. Hello, sir. The, uh, I don't know from where the audio is coming. Is my video visible? Yes, sir. Your video is visible. Okay, okay. Thank you. So, coming to the risk factors of the carcinoma of uh, endometrium. So, mainly the important risk factors is the unopposed estrogen exposure. That is the increase in the estrogen and uh, uh, no uh, progesterone leads to the proliferation of the endometrium, and that leads to the carcinoma of uh, the endometrium. Mainly, so this might be due to the early menarche or the late menopause or the increased menstruation span or uh, the nulliparity, which are all predisposing for uh, the increase in the estrogen. So, as the number of the menstrual cycle increase and as uh, uh, the how much period the endometrium is in the proliferative phase, that many are the chances of uh, the conversion of the endometrium into the carcinoma. So, coming to uh, uh, about uh, about the obesity, uh, he is, uh, um, obesity. Here in uh, the obesity, in the, during the premenopause, there will be cessation of the natural uh, estrogen and the progesterone uh, production. So the fat which is present in uh, our body will be con converted in the estrogen. And that is a peripheral conversation of the fats will happen to the ear that will convert and produce the estrogen. And that conversion of the estrogen, uh, conversion to the estrogen is responsible for the, the proliferation, proliferative act, action on the endometrium. So hypertension and the diabetes mellitus are also considered as uh, the risk factors, but they are not uh, yet establishment has not happened whether they are ind independent factors or not. And again, the estrogen only hormone replacement therapy and the sequential oral contraceptive pills and uh, the tamoxifen has been uh, associated as uh, the risk factor of the carcinoma of endometrium. And the symptoms which are related, that is the hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer, 
as an association of the 40 to 60 percent in the lower uterine segment of predisposition as a the, which is related to the endometrial carcinoma and as well as uh, the defect in the, the mismatch repair genes msh1 2 and 6 uh, and pmsh pms2 uh, these mismatch repair uh, protein gene mutations uh, have been associated with the lynch syndrome and all so these are the syndromes which are associated one is the hereditary non polyposis colorectal cancer and another one is uh, the lynch syndrome which is associated with the endometrial carcinoma Coming to the clinical features of uh, the endometrial carcinoma, one and most important uh, uh, the clinical feature is a postmenopausal vaginal bleeding that is seen in the 80 to 90 percent of the cases of presentation. And uh, out of that, 80 to 90 percent of uh, the postmenopausal uh, vaginal bleeding with the patient presents, only the attributable uh, the bleeding which is uh, which can be attributed to the endometrial cancer is of 10 percent of the cases. And apart from those, uh, the vaginal bleeding, postmenopausal, normal vagin vaginal discharge, abnormal papillomatous smear, thickened endometrium on routine ultrasound, and uh, depending upon the stage, these are of the postmenopausal vaginal bleeding and abnormal vaginal discharge are uh, the clinical features of the early stages as well. As uh, the stage increases, as the organ involvement increases, the extent of the tumor increases. Uh, the clinical future varies. For example, if uh, the tumor is invading into the urinary bladder and all, urinary bleeding will be there. If it is going back into the rectum, the rectal bleeding will be there. Or due to the inundation of the tumor, there will be uh, the constipation may occur. Or uh, the pain may be there. And the pain and uh, the abdomen distension is due to the extent of the tumor and uh, the involvement of the uh, involvement of uh, the liver and all, due to which uh, the abdominal distension may be there. And uh, if there, there is involvement of the liver, the portal venous uh, tension and uh, the pressure will be rise and there will be the ascites. And if it is involving the lungs and all endometrial carcinoma, then the top of the hemoptysis. So whatever the clinical features are there are uh, strictly attributed to the sta uh, stage of the disease. So depending upon the involvement and all uh, the stage, the clinical features varies. And uh, usually, uh, the endometrial carcinoma have the good overall survival of the 80% and the mass screening for the endometrial carcinoma is not required. If they are the carriers or the patients who are related with uh, the heredity non polyposis colon cancer, colorectal cancer, and after the 35 years, the prophylactic bilateral sanctuary should be strongly considered. And coming to the workup, so the workup here, uh, after the history and uh, the complete physical examination, uh, starting with a complete blood count uh, and uh, renal function test, liver function test, and the chest x-ray. The confirmation is uh, needed. And uh, the gold standard uh, for the confirmation is uh, the endometrial tissue sample. That is the endometrial biopsy, which is preferred. And it has the sensitivity in the 91% in the premenopause age, in the premenopausal phase and 99.6 in the postmenopausal phase and it has greater than 98% of the specificity. Coming to the DNC, if it is, it is not required if the hysterectomy has been planned and indications of uh, the dilatation and the curatage are the negative biopsy where is there if the symptoms, if the biopsy or uh, if the specimen is inadequate, if the symptoms perceives the and inadequate sampling has been there and if it is uh, the patient has been planned for the uh, fertility preservation and uh, the additional information uh, what uh, apart from the endometrial biopsy what we get in the uh, dilatation and curatage is the tumor grade and coming to the transvaginal sonography here here in the normal endometrium looks thin homogeneously hyperopoic whereas the it looks thickened and heterogeneous in the hyperplasia, polyps, and the cancers. Whenever uh, the uh, endometrial thickness is less than uh, 5 millimeters, then it is considered to be within the normal limits. When it is the 5 millimeters or the greater, it is considered to be abnormal. And drawback is that the endometrial thickness is fluctuates before the menopause. And if these are inconclusive, if there are uh, some doubts in this, then we can go for the saline infusion sonography or the histoscopy <clears throat> when there is uh, the transvaginal, uh, transvaginal ultrasound is abnormal and the biopsy is negative or non-diagnostic 
or the uterine cavity is the next level. So we do the saline infusion sonography or the hysteroscopy to exclude the, any intracavity lesion, especially polyps, which can be malignant. So again, same thing. And uh, next is the CT, then is the MRI, and then is the PET CT. So the CT, oral and IV contrast for the extent of the tumor and uh, the regional and uh, the distant metastasis. And uh, the MRI for the accurate tumor extension and then differentiate between the endo and tumor. Let us see next slide in which we will have the detailed thing. So in the CD, CECT pelvis, uh, usually the hypodense mass that may be diffuse or circumscribed or the rigidity or the polypoidal pattern. If uh, the myometrial invasion is seen, that uh, implies that uh, the tumor has been involved one third to the two third of the myometrial nucleus. The involvement of the cervix is there. That is, uh, if involvement of the cervix has been seen in the CECT pelvis, then the tumor size is usually greater than 3.5 centimeters. And uh, if there is periotral fat loss, then the parametral extension is there in CECT. And that's why we can see the sidewall extension and uh, the lymph nodes greater than one centimeter in the diameter in the short axis diameter that are considered significant. Whereas the MRI pelvis is the most accurate because it gives uh, the involvement of uh, the myometrial invasion, uh, the accuracy, it has uh, the more accurate accuracy when compared with the CECT and it gives correct delineation of the myometrial involvement and, all. and has the lymph node sensitivity of the 27 to 66. In coming, coming to the PET CT, again the PET CT is of little benefit for the tumor extension but its lymph node sensitivity is greater. In coming to the CA125 levels, greater than, one, uh, greater than 40 units per ml, correlated significantly, is correlated significantly with the regional lymph node metastasis. And it has been used as indication for the full pelvic and the periodic involvement at the time of the surgical staging and in the absence of the metastasis. Coming to the pathology, if you see, Starting from the ranging from the simple hyperplasia, complex hyperplasia, usually the simple hyperplasia have the chances of uh, the carcinoma in less than 1%, and the complex hyperplasias have the chances of 3% of the malignancy, and the atypical hyperplasia have the chances of the malignancies that is uh, 8%, and atypical complex hyperplasias have the malignancy chances of the 29%. And uh, both for uh, the atypical simple and the uh, atypical complex hyperplasias, the management is if she has completed childbearing, then we can go for the hysterectomies. If she has not completed childbearing, then we can go for the progestational pelvis block. So we have completed about the pathology. Coming to the classification of the endometrial cancers. So here the, the endometrial carcinoma, uh, endometrial adenocarcinoma is uh, the most uh, in which uh, we get uh, the non otherwise specified below glandular secretory and the ciliated, and as well as the other variants like the adenocarcinoma with the squamous differentiation, uterine papillary serous, uterine clear cell carcinoma, transitional cell carcinoma, mixed type, undifferentiated, and metastatic carcinoma. Each and everything about detail we are going to see in the next slides. So the endometroid proliferative epithelium is there and the squamous features are there when then we name it as an adenosquamous carcinoma usually uh, about the below glandular carcinoma the prognosis is similar to the low grade uh, endometroid carcinoma secretory usually they are well differentiated and uh, the prognosis is also good and they are the less than two percent of the endometroid carcinoma similar. And the ciliated, when we call it as a ciliated endometrial carcinoma, when greater than 75% of the tumor specimen comprises of the ciliated cell, then we call it an. And usually it is associated with the, the these ciliated ones are associated with the estrogen mucinous. Coming to the mucinous carcinoma, if there are the greater than 50% of the mucinous cells of the tumor cells are there, then it is known as the mucinous cell carcinoma, and that is the CEA plus two. More chances of this is positive into there. Coming to the serous carcinoma, it is an aggressive type with a cellular ATP and the papillae, the diagnostic and the somoma bodies are seen in 33%, and the five year survival rate is usually 52.6. And when compared to the endometroid carcinoma, the endometroid uh, histology is having 83.2% of the five year survival 
and coming to the TSL carcinoma and uh, the prognosis is between usually 52 to 80 percent, 83 percent. That is between the serous as well as in between the endometroid. Uh, so the TSL, the prognosis is between the serous and the endometroid. And usually about around the 62 percent of the five year overall survival is there. And uh, Squamous cell carcinomas are usually rare and 68.9% uh, of the survival is there. And uh, the prognosis is poor when there is distant and extra inference. Coming to the undifferentiated carcinoma, usually the malignant and the they are the malignant and the poorly differentiated carcinomas. So they are uh, aggressive and they are also sometimes known as the de-differentiated carcinomas. And uh, microstatolite instability and the possibility of the Lynch syndrome is greater in the undifferentiated carcinoma. And the mixed histology, when we call the mixed histology, is whenever the each component is greater than 10% of the cells, consisting of the greater than 10% of the cells, then we call it as a mixed histology. Whereas uh, in the simultaneous tumors, when we call the simultaneous tumors, is if the tumor is less than five centimeters and if it is well differentiated uh, and uh, confined to the endometrium uh, confined to the endometrium not invading the myometrium and all and uh, no vascular invasion and limited less than to the middle one third of the myometrium and along with that if it is having the ovarian lesions that is the bilateral then they are the uh, then they are the two concomitant primary tumors so then we can label it as the simultaneous tumors. So coming to the molecular biology here, so the endometrial carcinoma are of the two types. There is one type one and another type two. Type one is mainly associated with the estrogen simulation, and the type two is not associated with any prior history of the prior history of any estrogen stimulation. Usually, uh, the type one is in the pre and the perimenopausal women. Whereas the type 2 is in the postmenopausal women and uh, type 1, we are having the minimal myometrial invasion. Usually, the type 2 presents with the deep and high grade uh, invasive uh, lesions and all. And uh, in the type 1, there will be the dysregulation of the PA, TK, and the P10 and AKT mutations. And usually, the P10 will become the functional loss. And uh, there will be the upstream of the type. Tyrosine kinase growth factor receptors, which will lead to the uncontrolled proliferation in the survival of the cell. In the type 2, usually, uh, as a present at the high stages of the present, usually the tumor uh, mutations of the tumor suppressor P53 gene is uh, held responsible in the uh, type 2 mutation and type 2 endometrial cancer. So these are the uh, again, uh, coming to the molecular analysis here. In the molecular analysis, uh, uh, starting with uh, the pole sequencing, starting with the pole uh, endometroid uh, carcinomas, uh, upon the DNA uh, MMR protein histochemistry, if the expression is lost, then uh, there will be uh, the endometroid carcinoma of the microstatolite instability, hyper uh, mutated one. And uh, upon the P53, uh, depending upon the P53 immunohistochemistry, if it is normal or the wild pattern, then the copy number low type mutations of the endometrial carcinoma will be there. If the aberrant or the mutant pattern is seen, that is uh, the copy number high mutant, uh, copy number high. That is uh, more presentations will be, uh, the more of the uh, histology will be of uh, the serous carcinoma when compared with the endometrial carcinoma. This is uh, again the same. Coming to the stage here, uh, endometrium, uh, apart from uh, if you consider that the, what is the, the 2019-2009 staging system is of uh, the surgical staging when compared with the 1988, uh, which is the clinical staging here. So this is the 2019 uh, the staging system, which is a clinical uh, surgical staging system. Whereas uh, in that the TX is the primary tumor, when the tumor cannot be assessed, we use the TX. The T0 is no evidence of the primary tumor. And uh, the T1, T2, T3, uh, T3 and T4 are there, in which the T1 is a tumor which is confined to the corpus uterine, including the endocervical glandular involvement. 1A will be the tumor which is limited to the endometrium or invading less than half of the myometrium. And 1B will be the tumor invading more than half of the myometrium. 
So here we can see uh, the one name in which uh, the tumor is confined to the uh, endometrium and uh, it is not causing uh, or uh, it is less than uh, invading the 50% of the myelin. In the 1B, uh, it will be invading more than uh, more or uh, more than uh, one half or the more of the myelinate. So you can see in uh, the 1B, uh, it is causing uh, the more than half of the myelinate in all. Coming to the T2, uh, if it is if there is uh, the stomal connective tissue involvement or the gross uh, cervical uh, stomal involvement is there, we label it as uh, the T2. And uh, again, in the T3, we are having 3A and 3B. 3A, we use for the serosal or the adnexal extent and the 3B for the vaginal involvement or the parameter. And the 4A, bladder mucosa or the bowel mucosa involvement. So let us see there. And uh, so in the two, you can see here, uh, the cervical involvement is there. Cervical stromal involvement is only taken as the two. Whereas uh, the endocervical glandular involvement is uh, taken in the stage one only. Whereas 3A, you can see um, the serosal or uh, the adnexal involvement is taken as 3A there. And the 3B, you can see the vaginal involvement. And uh, the 3C is there. Again, uh, the 3C uh, will, uh, I will tell you in the next slide. And the 4A, you can see if it is invol uh, involving the either the bladder or either the rectum, it is taken as the 4A. Or if the both invasion is there, we can take it as the 4A. 4B, when we call, whenever there is a distant spread, uh, either, either to the abdominal organs or to the lungs or the bones. So coming to the 3C stage. In the 3C stage, we can see the regional lymph node metastasis. If it is to the pelvic lymph nodes, we take it as a 3C1. When we call it as 3C2, when there is positive parotid uh, lymph node metastasis is there. And M0, we use no distant metastasis. And M1, that is the stage 4B disease, we use for the distant metastasis. <clears throat> which we not, uh, the things we, we not include in the 4B are if there is pelvic or the paraortic nodes are involved, or if there is vagina or uterine serosa or adnexa involvement, is there, we don't include these in the four, stage 4B. And the histologic grade, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, from the well differentiated, moderately differentiated to the fully differentiated. The same thing. Coming to the management of uh, the carcinoma of the endometrium, the main part, the uh, hysterectomy, uh, the main role uh, of uh, main role of management in uh, the carcinoma of the endometrium is uh, the surgery. So the surgery being the hysterectomy, removal of uh, the corpus, uh, cervix, and the parametrium, that is total abdominal hysterectomy uh, and the bilateral salpings of the either the way of uh, either the, by the way of the laparotomy or the laparoscopy that is the laparoscopic vaginal hysterectomy and the bilateral sampling of uh, by the laparoscopic uh, assisted by uh, vaginal hysterectomy it includes uh, the vaginal removal of the uterus and uh, the laparoscopy which is used for the bilateral sampling of and we don't go for uh, the radical hysterectomy until unless there is a gross cervical involvement for the microscopic lymph node metastasis we do the pelvic radiation and the surgical staging is the most accurate method for the lymph nodes. And the lymphadenectomy coming to the lymphadenectomy, pelvic lymph nodes are present from uh, the distal half of the, uh, we go for the lymphadenectomy for, for the pelvic lymph nodes from the distal half of the circumflex, uh, from the common iliac artery to the circumflex iliac vein. Till that the pelvic nodes will be there. And uh, node and tissue anterior to the operator and surrounding iliac arteries in the vein. And the parotid between the vena cava and the aorta and up to the superior mesenteric artery and down to the midpoint of the common iliac artery. And uh, these are uh, the images of the central lymph node, uh, the biopsy considered. So we can see the most common location uh, between uh, the external and the internal iliac artery and uh, the less common location at the bifurcation of the common. Mm -hmm at the bifurcation of the aorta. And uh, this is after uh, the, uh, the, that is the logarithm for the surgical staging of the endometrial uh, carcinoma. The peritoneal and the serosal evaluation and the washing, then the retroperitoneal evaluation and excision of all the mapped central lymph node or any sus suspicious lymph node 
that that is palpated and all after that removal if there is no mapping uh, then uh, the site specific uh, lymph node dissection is performed this is performed because uh, there may be the microscopic uh, lymph node metastasis which may be blocking the going of the dye and all so the site specific lymph node dissection is performed to rule out whether there is involvement or not coming to the sampling again the there are the five lymphatic stations one is the paraortic common leg internal leg and the operator uh, external leg and the operator and each side each uh, from the each site and each side each each lymph node is taken and total of the 10 lymph nodes are identified and the trials showed the pelvic lymphadenectomy is going to improve the surgical state that is good prognostic good uh, that is a good prognostic uh, the pelvic lymphadenectomy is a good prognostic and uh, the octal lymphadenectomy is a type of lymphadenectomy which is performed if there is grade 3 or the serious or the clear cell or the myometrial invasion and uh, regarding the sentinel lymph node biopsy 86% of the successful map to patients have at least one sentinel lymph node it increases the sensitivity and the specificity uh, it has increased sensitivity and the specificity if there is no bilateral mapping site specific lymphadenectomy uh, has been performed to rule out the lymph node metastasis the suspicious node on palpation and it must be excised and all so coming to the hysterectomy again according to the gynecological oncology group trial uh, the laparoscopy versus the laparotomy uh, was performed a study was performed stage went to the occult stage to where uh, uh, stage uh, the tumors were taken in which it was found that the fewer to moderate severe adverse events were there and the shorter hospitalization stay of the laparoscopy uh, lap laparoscopy performed Uh, hysterectomy and conversion rate of uh, to the laparotomy was 25% and the five year overall survival was same and there was small difference in the recurrence rate and uh, regarding the lymphadenectomy the, there were the two trials that is the italian trial and the masi and the asiatic trial in the italian trial yeah, and uh, the both the masi and asiatic trial both studies uh, showed that the pelvic lymphadenectomy significantly improved the surgical strength but it uh, did not improve the disease free survival or the overall survival coming after the initial evaluation and all then uh, pounding it at uh, to be the pure endometrial carcinoma or uh, we have to differentiate between uh, whether it is the pure endometrial carcinoma or the serious or the clear cell or the undifferentiated as uh, the serious and the clear cell and undifferentiated are the aggressive uh, carcinomas the treatment is somewhat different and the pure endometrioid uh, carcinoma as it is having good overall survival and the prognosis the management is different for it so let us see if uh, the disease is limited to the uterus if the patient is primarily suitable for uh, the surgery and there are no uh, comorbidities or uh, there are no contraindications we go for the total abdominal hysterectomy and the bilateral salpingoophorectomy and if the patient desired fertility we are having certain different options for it which we are going to see in the later uh, slides if the surgery if the patient is not suitable for the surgery we prefer with the external beam radiotherapy or the brachytherapy coming to the if there is suspected gross involvement is there uh, on the cervical biopsy or the uh, on the pelvic mri depending uh, depending upon the cervical biopsy and mri positive or the negative result we have to see if it is negative we can go for the total abdominal hysterectomy or the bilateral salpingoophorectomy and we can wait for the adjuvant treatment here also uh, previous in the previous slide after the surgery that is the total hysterectomy and the bilateral salpingoophorectomy we depend upon uh, the post operative histopathology finding to give the adjuvant treatment similarly after uh, if there is a gross cervical involvement if it, if it has been proved negative we wait for uh, uh, the post operative histopathology findings to give the to prefer the adjuvant treatment and all so if it is positive gross involvement is there if the surgery again if the patient is feasible for the surgery we go for the total abdominal hysterectomy uh, or the total hysterectomy or the radical hysterectomy and the bilateral salpingoophorectomy and uh, or we can go for the external beam radiotherapy or the brachy or if it is not 
feasible for surgery then again ebrt or the brachy are the options and again after uh, a total abdominal hysterectomy or radical hysterectomy uh, we depend upon the post operative histopathology findings to whether to go for the adjuvant treatment or not and uh, if uh, suspected extra uterine disease is there we uh, go for the ca125 and uh, other imaging and suitable for the surgery uh, no evidence of uh, the extra uterine tissue nearly 10 to 15 slides will be there and if the disease has been confined uh, to the abdominal appendix, we go for the total uh, hysterectomy and the bilateral sample geophorectomy or the debulking. And if it is distant metastasis is there, we go for the systemic therapy or uh, depending upon EBRT or the SBRT, we choose uh, different different modalities of the options, whatever, whichever, uh, depending upon the performance status and all. And uh, if she, uh, they are not suitable for uh, the primary surgery, Local regional disease is there, we go for the EVRT uh, radiotherapy. And if it is distant metastasis, we have to go for the system therapy. And let us come to the adjuvant treatment. Whatever uh, the primary modality we have done to the patient, depending upon uh, this, as the surgery has been the primary modality and if it is completed. If the stage is surgical stage in uh, stage 1A and the grade 1 to grade 2, we can observe or we can. Uh, give the vaginal brachytherapy only to the individuals who, whose age is greater than 60 or there is lymphovascular space invasion. In the grade 3, we have to vaginal brachytherapy is usually preferred. In the grade 1, uh, in the stage 1b, with the grade 1, the vaginal brachytherapy is preferred and uh, grade 2, vaginal brachytherapy will be preferred and uh, in the grade 3, EBRT is usually different. That day and uh, plus or minus systemic therapy, depending upon the histologies and other factors. In the surgical stage 2, grade 1 to grade 3, we prefer giving the external beam radiotherapy or the visual therapy. And we use uh, systemic therapy plus or minus. And in the surgical stage 3, 4, we prefer uh, the systemic therapy plus or minus combined with the external beam radiotherapy or the visual. If there is incomplete surgical stage patients, then if it is stage 1A grade 1 to do a lower lymphovascular invasion and the stage 1A grade 3 and age less than 60 with lower lymphovascular invasion, no myometrial invasion. Again, the thing is management is to observe. And in the stage 1A or grade 3 or uh, 1B grade 1 to grade 2 and greater than 60 with no lymphovascular invasion, we consider the imaging and prefer further visual breaking. And similarly, as discussed previously, the management will be the same for uh, stage 1A, 1B, grade 1 to grade with the lymphovascular invasions and all, depending upon the imaging and the surgical uh, restaging, the management will be there. And this is for the fertility uh, sparing options. Sir. And uh, we do this whenever there is well differentiated endo, uh, endometrial endocarcinoma is there on the dilatation of the cure patch, which is confirmed by the expert pathology and uh, on the MRI it is limited to the uh, endometrium and there is absence of the metastasis and there is there are no contraindications to the medical therapy that is meso uh, megastrol or the metoxicogestrol or the levonorgestrol these are the medical therapy which are given for the, the resistant based therapy which are given for the endometrial carcinoma and patients should undergo the counseling after these are all uh, fertility expert and consultation after all and then keeping on the patient on the progesterone based therapy we regularly evaluate three to six months either the dnc or the endometrial biopsy we can do and uh, depending upon that if there is complete response we can encourage conception and then after the, the birth of the child we can go for the, the total abdominal hysterectomy and all and if the endometrial cancer is present despite of the therapy and all we directly go for the total of the total hysterectomy and the bilateral sample of And this is uh, how we perform the surveillance and all. Uh, give the patient the surveillance and physical exam for the three to uh, six months, for the two to three years, then every six months for up to the five years, CA1 to the elevated and imaging as clinical indicator and the patient education we do. And depending upon again, uh, the disseminated metastasis is there, isolated metastasis is there and local regional recurrences there, the management depends. 
and this is uh, the therapy for uh, the lap uh, the lap will do that one thing we were at the local reg uh, regional regulations if it is a uh, negative for the distant metastasis upon the radiological imaging and if there is no prior rt to the site of the recurrence then we can go for the external beam radiotherapy or the brachy depending upon uh, the how much uh, the local regional uh, local regional recurrence has happened if there is no prior rt um, at the site of the recurrence we can go for the brachy therapy or the previous uh, ebrt is there depending upon that If the previous CBIT has been delivered, we go for the surgical exploration uh, plus resection uh, to see how much uh, the disease and extent it has been involved, and we can go for the intraoperative radiotherapy and all. Uh, we can do, or we can go for the systemic therapy also. And uh, after the external beam radiotherapy or the brachy therapy and the surgical exploration, the disease is confined to region. We can go for the external beam radiotherapy plus or minus brachy therapy. or if it is the local regional disease uh, the pelvic lymph nodes are there again uh, external beam radiotherapy parotic or uh, parotic or the common iliac lymph node involvement external uh, external beam radiotherapy plus and minus ex systemic therapy can be done depending upon the histology and all other risk factors are there and uh, upper abdominal and peritoneal are there uh, microscopic residual diseases there systemic brachy therapy and uh, coming to the next uh, if uh, the biopsy findings are the serous carcinoma or the tsl carcinoma or undifferentiated or de differentiated carcinoma or the carcinosarcoma is there we have to consider uh, ca125 and uh, the other imaging and then we have to label it for the suitable for surgery or not if it is suitable for surgery we can go for the total abdominal hysterectomy and the surgical staging and consider the maximal tumor bulking uh, debulking for the gross disease if it is not suitable again the external uh, beam radiotherapy with a combined with a brachy therapy plus or minus systemic therapy can be done and upon again upon uh, the uh, total abdominal hysterectomy and uh, the bilateral salpingoforectomy we have to uh, depend upon the post operative histopathology findings uh, depending upon it if it is 1a we go for the systemic uh, therapy plus vaginal brachy therapy or the external beam radiotherapy or the vaginal brachy therapy in selected cases of non invasive cases or we can go for the observation in some cases but uh, usually the observation is not preferred uh, going for uh, the external beam radiotherapy and the vaginal brachy therapy is more preferred in the stage 1b 2 3 and the 4 we go for uh, the systemic therapy either combined with the external beam radiotherapy or the vaginal brachy therapy and uh, after uh, this ebrt and all if it is not suitable we again reevaluate for the surgical resection coming to the how the radiotherapy uh, is given and all so the radiotherapy is given in the two forms one is external beam radiotherapy and another one is intravaginal radiation and the intravaginal radiation usually the high dose of the radiation is delivered to the vaginal mucosa limiting uh, the dose to the surrounding normal structures that is in front is the bladder back is the rectum and above is are the small intestines so usually uh, the applicator which is used is the cylinder and uh, high dose rate brachy therapy using the iridium 192 sources is being used and uh, 21 gray is usually delivered per fraction per each setting we deliver 7 gray with a gap uh, to the three fractions means three settings we deliver the 21 gray in three settings each setting we deliver 7 gray and uh, each uh, setting will be with uh, with a gap of 1 to 2 weeks you know usually of one week and the dose will be prescribed uh, 0.5 cm depth from the mucosal surface and then to be uh, treated depends upon the depth of invasion and the tumor uh, grade and all 
usually uh, the seven centimeters of the length uh, of the vagina will be there. And depending upon the other features, we depend, uh, we treat how much of the length to be treated. And uh, LDR with the CCM 197 to the 30 to 35 degree can be prescribed to a dose of 0.5 centimeter depth from the vaginal mucosa. And coming to the external beam radiation that is conventional, at the time of the simulation, the small bowel is obviously by using the oral contrast. We use a vaginal marker to use uh, to define the vaginal cuff. A rectal contrast with the beam can be given and a prone position to displace the small intestine from the radiation field is then target volumes are pelvic lymph nodes including the obturator external internal and lower common index and the proximal two thirds of the vagina and the presacral usually are not included unless the patients have the cross cervical involvement high energy linear accelerators uh, the 15 mv are preferred because of their thin sparing effect and the subcutaneous tissue Beam arrangement to parallel opposite ABP or the four field box technique can be used. So, the pelvic radiotherapy can be uh, delivered uh, by the APPA fields. Uh, the superior border we can place at uh, after the APPA field can be placed at the L5 S1 and the inferior border, the bottom of the operator foramen and the lateral border two centimeters beyond the widest point of the inlet of the two body pelvis and lateral border anteriorly we can place in front of the pubic symphysis and posteriorly at the s2 and the s3 and the superior and inferior border are same as abba and the dose usually 50.4 gram is when the pelvic radiation is used and 45 gram when it is combined with the intravaginal brachytherapy so these are the fields uh, superior border, inferior border, you can see, uh, you are seeing in the lateral borders, you can see, and in the, the lateral view, you can see uh, first image is AP, APP, and uh, second is uh, the lateral image. You can see the unmentioned borders. Coming to the again, IMRT, usually the supine position immobilized uh, using the cast and all. Oral and the rectal contrast can be used, IV contrast and the vaginal cuff marker is used. And the tailor at all and the small at all have given the guidelines upon to use the modified 7mm margin around the contrast and enhance the bezels to offer a good surrogate target for the pelvic lymph nodes. And the small at all, again, for the delineation of the CTV for the IMRT, the post operative treatment of the endometrial and cervical cancer. That is a modified 7mm margin excluding the bowel and the muscle is recommended around the iliac vessels to create a nodal uh, clinical target volume. Uh, to create a nodal planning target volume, an additional expansion of the 7mm all around the nodal CTV is generally recommended. Vaginal PTV is created by outlining the contrast enhanced vaginal cup and adding a 3 cm margin to the account for the impact of the bladder and the rectal view as well as of uh, for the vaginal motion and that allows the significant sparing of the small bone. The main impact of the IMRT is it uh, allows the significant sparing of the small bone. And uh, coming to the external uh, extended field radiotherapy, which is used whenever there are the pos two parotid nodes are there. CT simulation is crucial when the treating external fields for the accurate delineation of the kidneys, small bowel, and the liver, liver in addition to the nodal lab. Nodal CTV in addition to the pelvic nodes, the pre, uh, pericaval and the inter outer caval and the parotid areas. Four field box technique, ABPA technique has been compared, and uh, kidneys might re receive a high dose with a four field arrangement. The lower border is same as in the pelvic area, but the upper border is placed at the higher extreme, that is T12 and the L1 interspace. Typically, the dose is 45.0 gram. Uh, at the 1.8 gram uh, per fraction and uh, usually the bowel toxicity and the genital urinary toxicities are more if we deliver the 15 gram. So the dose has been slight uh, decreased to the 45 gram. And coming to the definitive radiotherapy for the inoperable disease, uh, one is the medically inoperable stage 1 and stage 2 uterine cancer is usually treated similar to the cervical cancer by using the intracavitin applicators with or without the pelvic radiation. And the clinical stage one and grade one and grade two 
when there is no evidence of the myometrial invasion or the lymph node metastasis can be given only the intracampular brachytherapy and uh, the brachytherapy is in the medically inoperable cases is to the tandem and ovoids to deliver 70 to 75 grade to the point A immediately. When the pelvic radiation is added, the dose is usually 45 to 50 grade supplemented with 30 to 35 grade from intracavity brachytherapy to bring the dose to point A to 80 to 80 grade. 85 grade and uh, coming to the system therapy the endocrine therapy and the chemotherapy are there endocrine therapy like these are the first things and the patient with well differentiated tumors and long uh, long disease free interval lung metastasis will know that to have the best results that is depending upon the year and the PR positive and the chemotherapy for the stage 3 and stage 4 and the recurrent disease is First line chemotherapy uh, is used for the recurrent and the stage 3 and the stage 4 uh, disease and the response rates are usually between the 50 to 60 with the me uh, median overall survival uh, overall survival about uh, the 12 to 15 months and uh, the first line chemotherapy starting with the doxorubicin was used then the single agency in the carboplatin where they are having a similar result then the combination of the doxorubicin plus cisplatin appeared more effective then Compared to the AP, uh, that is a uh, doxorubicin and a cisplatin, actually, it exists cisplatin and uh, the dox, uh, doxorubicin therapy, uh, therapy where it uh, was superior, found to be superior, and non inferior trial for the stage 3, stage 4, and different disease that is comparing the packet axle uh, carboplatin to the TAP. No significant, uh, there is no significant, show that there is no significant difference in the median period free survival and the median overall survival. And it has more hematological and neurotoxicity with the EAP regimen. And the combination of the carboplatin or the liposomal uh, doxorubicin is still in the trial and posting some of the results of it. The second line chemotherapy, prolonged disease free uh, interval, and uh, those treated with uh, the cisplatin or uh, the taxan therapy, treated with the similar therapy or the corner. Uh, there is concept of the platinum uh, sensitivity also and other agents topotic and gemcitabine have, uh, have been used as second line chemotherapy newer agents which have come which have come under the bevacizumab anti-vascular endothelial growth factor anti-angiogenic agents anti-egf for tk objectinib or the allotinib anti-egf for monoclonal antibodies like the cetuximab or dual had to inhibitors like lapatinib and the anti had to body transtuzumab the newer agents which are come in the management of the endocrine. So that's all for uh, today's session. That is uh, the custom of management of the custom of the endometrium. Hope to meet you all in uh, the next session. Thank you, Nigam, and uh, thank you for the aim to EG. Thank you, sir, for the nice session with uh, in details.